In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the invisible stitch so you can join your granny squares invisibly. We've got these lovely sharp corners and can you see any yarn poking through? I actually sewed these squares together with red yarn and I don't know about you, but I cannot see any red yarn poking through there. On the back, you can just about see some tiny red stitches, but on the front, this join is truly invisible and that's why it's my favourite join. So let's learn how to join squares invisibly. Before we sew our squares together, I strongly recommend that you lay out all of your granny squares for your project, whether it's a cardigan, a blanket, whatever, lay out all your squares in the order that you want them to be, and then we're going to temporarily join them with locking stitch markers or safety pins, hair clips, something like that, just to get a temporary join on these squares. And that stops them flapping about and getting out of order too much. And it really helps when you're doing a big project. So with the mattress stitch, which is the invisible stitch that we're learning, with the mattress stitch, we can either join our squares together in strips. So that would be where we would join one long strip of squares and then another long strip of squares. And then we would work along and sew those two strips together. Or the way that I'm gonna show in this tutorial is we're going to work all of our horizontal seams first and then all of our vertical seams. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. I've purposefully chosen light coloured squares with a bright red yarn so I can prove to you how invisible this seam is on the front because I guarantee we will barely be able to see any red yarn on this seam. So that's why I'm using a bright red yarn but I would usually recommend using a yarn that blends in with your squares or is your border colour. If you use a yarn that is your border colour, your ends you can then weave into your border. So let's actually get sewing these squares together. So we're going to be starting here and working across here for our seam. So I'm going to pick up that square at the front and bring it a bit closer to the camera so you can see. And we can see in our corners we've got two chains. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do a bit of a knot through these two chains using the mattress stitch. So I'm going to put my needle through the back loop only of that first chain of the corner. And I'm gonna rotate my needle round and I'm gonna put my needle from back to front through the back loop of that second chain there. Then I'm going to pull that through. And I'm gonna leave a tail for weaving in later. And then we're gonna go back and do exactly the same stitch again. And this sort of double stitch locks that yarn in place so that it sort of knots it through those two chains. So I'm going to put my needle again through the back loop of the first chain and come up through the back loop only of that second chain. And I'm going to pull that through and pull it tight. And as you can see, that, that sort of double stitch there has locked that yarn into place. So I'm now going to zoom in so we can see what I'm doing at this seam a bit easier. Hopefully it's a little easier to see what I'm doing now I've zoomed in. So to make our first stitch on this grey square, so we're going to do one stitch on the grey, one stitch on the mint, one stitch on the grey, one stitch in the mint, all the way along this seam. So our first stitch in our grey square, we're going to do the same as what we did here. So we're only working through the back loops of the stitches. So we're going through the back loop of that first chain of that corner there and then I'm going to bring my needle up through the back loop of that second chain there. You don't have to do your stitch in one stitch like this, you could do it in two. So I could go through the back loop of that stitch and then come back up through the back loop of the next stitch along, just like that but I prefer to sort of scoop them with my needle. So we've done our first stitch on the grey square. So now we're gonna move over onto this mint colored square. So I'm actually not gonna move on to the next stitch here. That's called the ladder stitch. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna do the mattress stitch. So we're gonna actually go back through the back loop of that stitch that we came out of. So that second chain of that corner, I'm going back into that back loop that that yarn is coming out of. And then I'm coming up in the next stitch. And I'm gonna pull that through. And now we're ready for our second stitch on the gray and we're gonna do the same again. So I'm gonna go back into the back loop. So we just came out of this stitch here, that second chain of the corner. 
and I'm going to come up through the back loop of the next stitch. And then we're going to go back to the mint square and I'm going to make a stitch through the back loop of that stitch that we came out of and then up through the back loop of the next stitch. Get rid of this tail, it's getting in the way a little bit. So notice how I'm not pulling my stitches tight yet. That's because the magic of this stitch is once we've done a few stitches, we can pull and they will all tighten and zip together beautifully. So don't worry that we can see our stitches at the minute because at the end of this, I promise you they will be invisible. So now we're gonna go back into that same stitch we came out of on the gray and up through the back loop of the next stitch along. And we're gonna keep repeating this all the way along the seam. So going back through that back loop of the stitch we came out of last on the mint colored square and up through the back loop of the next stitch. And then doing exactly the same on the gray square. So we're going in the back loop that we just came out of and up through the back loop of the next stitch. So now let's pull on this yarn so that these stitches zip together beautifully. And I find it often works best if you hold those two squares together. So all I've done there is pulled on that yarn end and you can see, I mean, if I stretch it, you can just about see a bit of red poking through, but honestly it is pretty invisible. So we're gonna continue doing that all the way along this seam. So we're gonna go back into the back loop of the stitch we came out of and up through the next stitch. And then back through the back loop on the gray side of the square and up through the next stitch. And you're gonna repeat those two steps alternating between the mint and the gray all the way along until you meet this corner. And then I will show you how we join the four squares together at the corner. So I've continued stitching along this seam here and you can see how beautifully neat it is and how neat that line is. Oh, I love this join so much. So we're going to now work out this corner. So I'm gonna keep doing a couple more stitches. So this stitch I'm coming out of that first chain of the corner. And then the same on that gray square is I'm coming out on the chain. So now I'm ready to do our last two stitches here. So I'm gonna do my two stitches. So I'm gonna go through the back loops of both of those chains of the corner. And this is now my last stitch into the mint square. So we're not gonna be stitching back into this mint square. And then I'm gonna do one more stitch on this gray square. So I'm doing exactly the same as what we did on that first corner. I'm going in through the back loop of the chain and back out through the back loop of that chain of that corner. So we've now finished joining these two squares together. And all we're gonna do is we're literally gonna hop over and start joining these two squares together. And um, there's gonna be no break, nothing special. That's all we're gonna do. I'm just gonna tighten this up. A bit more of a tug. There we go. So I've just tightened all that up. So I've not pulled it too tight, but it is just the right amount of tension. So now we're gonna swap over to this cream in this peach colored square. So because I finished on this back square, the gray square here, I'm gonna come down and my next stitch is gonna be through the two corner chains of this cream square here. So I'm going to go in through the back loop of that first chain and back up through the back loop of the second chain. Oops. Then we're gonna do the same on this peach colored square. So I'm gonna go in through the back loop and back out through the back loop of both of the chains of the corner. There we are. And then I'm gonna pull this a little tight just to make sure that corner's nice and buttered up together. And when we come and do the seam that runs around here, we, I'm gonna show you a tip where we work this corner, the, these four corners a little bit differently when we work in this seam to get really sharp corners. Oh, I love this join. So I'm just gonna remove that 
stitch marker. So now I'm gonna do exactly the same along this seam. So remember, I'm going into the back loop of the stitch we just worked, and back up through the back loop of the next stitch, and I'm gonna work the same on the peachy colored square. And then you're gonna continue along, oops, there we are. And then you're gonna continue along this seam until you get to this corner. And then what we're gonna do in this corner is do another one of those double stitches and then we can cut off any excess yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the way along here and I'll meet you back at this corner. So I've finished working all the seam along here and then my last stitch on the cream square is through those two corner chains again. And then my last stitch on the peach coloured square is through those two corner chains. So now before I do our locking double stitch, I'm going to pull on this yarn just to zip those two granny squares together. There we are. And then I'm going to do a double stitch through the back loop of those two corner chains, just that we just like we did here. So I'm literally just going to go back through the back loops of those two corner chains again. And again, that should lock our seam in place. And so now I'm going to trim my yarn down. And we finished doing our horizontal join. So let's work this vertical join. I'm going to turn my squares over and we're going to start over here. So I'm going to take this stitch marker off and we're literally going to work this seam just the same as the previous seam, starting with a double stitch through this corner and working all the way along. And then I want you to work that seam and then meet me back here at this corner. And what we're going to do is we're going to zip those corner chains together to get super sharp right angles on our squares. So I've sewn along this seam here between the cream and the mint coloured square. And now I'm at this corner. The last stitch was through the two chains of the two corners of these two squares. And then to make our corners zip up nicely and give us nice right angles on our granny squares, this is the only way I've ever found that actually does that. So we're going to be working through the front loops only, so not the back loops anymore, the front loops only of the two chains of the corners of all four squares. So I'm going to put my needle through the front loop of the first chain of that grey square and then the front loop of the second chain of that chain two corner. I'm going to pull the yarn through and then we're going to work around in a circle. So now we're at the peach coloured square. So I'm going to go in through the front loop of the first chain and out through the front loop of the second chain. And then with the cream squares, we're going to do the same. So we're going in through the front loop and back out through the front loop of the chain two. And then our last square to do this in is our mint colored square. So I'm going through the front loop of that first chain and out through the front loop of that second chain. So now if I pull this tight, you can see how it zips those corners together beautifully. It is so neat. I've said it already in this video, but I really love this join. So just to get back over here, I'm going to go through the front loops of that grey square one more time. Give that a nice pull to hide that red yarn. This is where if you use a yarn that actually matches is where you can just about see. But if I pull that tight, you shouldn't be able to see the red anymore. So now we're going to join our grey and our peach squares together. So we're just going to continue joining just like we've done previously. That going the second pass over your corners is the only time you go through the front loops. We're now going to swap back to the back loops. So we've come out of the grey square. So now we're going to go into the back loops. If I can find it, oh, it's actually bent around there. So that is the back loop of the chain. I had to wiggle for it. I think it's because this is quite, I've made these squares with quite a tight tension. So I've gone through the back loop of that second chain of the corner and then up through the first double crochet of this side of the pink square. Remember, through the back loops. Then we'll go back and do the same on the grey square. So I'm going into that back loop, back out of that back loop. 
And then we're back to doing our stitch as we've done previously, going through the back loops of each stitch and then continue on down the end of this seam and then do your double stitch to fasten off. That is our invisible join finish. You can see you can't see any red on the front. If we stretch our squares, you can just about see some red poking through there. But if you use a coordinating color, you wouldn't be able to notice that. On the back, so you can see some red stitches poking through on the back. Again, coordinating colour, you would barely be able to see it. And that's why this is my favourite join in crochet, even if it takes a million years just to join four squares. So yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial and you might enjoy the one that I've popped on your screen now.